webinar under the communications menu. So I'm going to click on that menu. And that will open up a screen listing all the different Collaborate sessions that are available. You should see probably only one session here. It's called SA Collaborate Webinar. All I need to do is simply click on that link and that's going to load Blackboard Collaborate in another browser window. The first time you load Blackboard Collaborate, it might be a little bit slow, um, so please be patient. You can see here I've got a prompt coming up saying uh, you have chosen to open join.jnlp, which is a JNLP file. Uh, what do I want to do? I'm going to open it with the Java Start Launcher. Now, depending on your computer and how it's configured, it might automatically open that file for you using the Java Quick Start Launcher. Alternatively, it may also go into your downloads um, section and you may have to manually go into your download section and double click that file to open it. So for today I'm just going to click OK. You can see uh, Java 7 quickly popped up there, verifying the application. It takes a few minutes to get in. While, while it's actually doing all that, I'll just quickly show you um, using Mozilla Firefox anyway, that you can access your downloads from this little green arrow here to the right of the search bar. When you click on that down arrow, it shows you the files you've downloaded. So if it didn't automatically launch Blackboard Collaborate, you can go into your downloads, and often you might access that by the tools menu in your web browser. Um, and you can actually just double click on that file and that should launch it for you. Anyway, in the background, um, Blackboard Collaborate has loaded. The first time it loads on your computer again, you may be prompted to accept um, certain security conditions or agree to certain um, permissions being granted to Blackboard Collaborate. So in those cases, please click uh, either yes, I agree, or I accept, and that will get you moving. Okay, this is the main Collaborate window, and you can see the toolbar up here, audio and video settings here. Participants here, this is where you'll, you'll show up when you log on. We have a chat window down the bottom left hand corner. We've got the main presentation page here. And we've also got some options up here to load content and record the session. Now the first thing that we recommend you do when you enter the Collaborate Classroom is to test that your audio settings are working correctly. The way to do that is to click on the Tools menu, select Audio, and select the Audio Setup Wizard. When you do that, the first thing to do then is to select your output device. So this is your speakers, or in this case a headset. We always recommend using a headset because often the speakers can interfere with the microphone and you get feedback. So please always try to use a headset where the speakers are, little speakers are kind of sitting in or outside your ears. Okay, so I've got um, my headphones here, so I'm going to click OK. I then click the play button and then Collaborate plays for me some text and I determine whether I can hear it or whether I need to increase the volume using this slider here. I can hear the slide I can hear it so I can click stop. You can listen to the, the whole thing if you want later. Um, and it says you uh, were you able to adjust the speaker volume comfortable listening levels? Yes, I could. If you couldn't, you may need to go back and have a look at your speaker settings. Again I'm using Microsoft Windows 7 so your computer may be different. But um, for Windows 7, often I come in here, right click on the little speaker icon and click on playback devices. And there I can see which speaker is set to be the default one to use. Um, and I can also, you know, look at the properties and change the levels and do all those kinds of things. But we won't do that today. It's just uh, if you have problems. Uh, so I, was I able to here? Yes I was. The next thing it does is ask me where, what microphone I'm using. And If you don't have a microphone you can still use Blackboard Collaborate but you won't be able to talk with other participants. Um, yes that's the microphone I'm using so I click OK. The next thing it's going to do is ask me to record some text. So I click the record button. Hello, hello, this is my text recording and I could slide that up a bit if the microphone level wasn't high enough. I'm going to click stop and then I click play and it plays back to me what it heard. That sounds fine so I'm going to click stop and it says were you able to hear blah, blah, 
reply, yes I was, thank you very much. Setup is complete, okay. Now, so that's really the vanilla basics of what you want to do when you get into Collaborate to make sure that your microphone and your speakers are working correctly. And of course we recommend you get into Collaborate 10 to 15 minutes early so you can test your microphone, then you can go away and make a cup of tea and come back ready to start. The other skills we're going to show you today are how to chat. So in the chat box area in the bottom left hand corner, you can see that there's a little tab here called Room. When I type into the box, uh, the white box here, when Room is clicked, it means I'm going to send a message to everyone. So I could say hi everyone. Um, did you see Q&A last night? Or you could respond to a question. You can you know, give someone feedback. All those kinds of things. The other option down the bottom left hand corner is a tab called moderators. So if you click the moderators tab and send a message, it's just a message that will go to the mods, moderators, and that would be for example Joy or it could be someone else who's facilitating the session. And so this is a way maybe you can excuse yourself or you have to leave early for some reason or you don't understand a particular topic, um, but maybe that's a way of addressing them more personally without letting everyone else know what you're thinking. The next thing I want to do is demonstrate how you give feedback. So in the main participant window up here, there is a smiley face icon. And you can choose any of these icons, but essentially when you select an icon, it comes up next to your name here and as a way of giving feedback to a question or to a comment or just uh, your mood in general. So maybe if the presentation's moving too slow, you can say, oh, let's make it faster. Or if you're having troubles catching up, you could ask to make it slower. Often um, your facilitator will ask you to give a smiley face if you can hear them or if you understand or if you're ready to move on. So it's again, it's a quick way of getting um, people's feedback. The other th next skill I want to show you is how to talk in a Collaborate session. So generally speaking, when you join the Collaborate session, you'll be listening, observing, giving smiley faces, chatting. However, you won't be talking the whole time because if everyone talked together, we wouldn't be able to understand anything that was going on. So generally as a participant in the classroom, the procedure is that you first raise your hand when you want to speak. So if you've got a question or you want to give some um, feedback, then generally you raise your hand. You can see here I've got a little number one next to me. That means I'm number one in the queue to have my question or my concern addressed. And your facilitator will probably say, okay Martin, I can see you've got your hand raised there. Would you like to say something? When that's happened, you can then lower your hand and you can click the talk button up here. Once you click the talk button, everyone else in the Collaborate room can hear what you're saying. And often the first thing you could say is, oh, can everyone hear me? And then the first thing that happens is, oh, everyone gives you a smiley face. And so you know everyone can hear you, so then you can keep going. Great. So keys are to raise your hand, click the talk button. After you finish talking, very important to unselect the talk button. So if you forget to untick, unselect the talk button after you've finished having your say, everyone will still be able to hear you and that could be background noise, it could be your breathing or it could be feedback. And additionally we only allow one or two people or two or three people to talk at the same time. So if you've got your talk button activated then it may prevent someone else from having their say. So always remember to deactivate your talk button. Great. Uh, there's also another icon here for stepping away from your session. So if you need to leave for some reason, you can do that, and that way people know why you're not responding. And there's also a poll response here. So if you're, if someone asks you a question, um, has everyone is everyone okay to stay another 10 or 15 minutes? You could actually tick yes, and that will actually create a poll um, when everyone else is online, a bit like an online voting system, and your facilitator will be able to tell how many people have selected yes and how many people have selected no. All right, moving on. The next thing we're going to show you is, I think the most next important thing is how to use the whiteboard here, the main section on the right. And then the last thing I'll show you is how to upload your content. For example, if you need to present a PowerPoint presentation, we'll show you how to do that also. So this main content window here has a little icon bar. You can play with the icons to see what everything does. Essentially there's a pointer. This one here is a bit like a star pointer, like a marker. We have a pencil in here and also a highlighter. There's my pencil. 
Here's my highlighter. You can draw boxes. Do all those kinds of things. You can also insert um, some graphics that are preloaded into Collaborate. Um, or you can paste a, um, a clip art image of the page as well. So if you've done a print screen, um, you can you know, place clip art and things in there as well, so images and things. So have a play with those settings if you feel it's useful for you. The most common thing that you're likely to do during your turn, when it comes your turn to moderate the session, I should mention that when you first join Collaborate, you'll be likely just coming in as a participant, which gives you limited access to what you can and can't do. However, your facilitator, likely Joy, will be able to give you moderator access. And once you have moderator access, you can then do additional things, such as use the whiteboard and upload your PowerPoint presentations. So that's where the load content button comes in. If you click the load content button, it asks you to locate the file you want to upload. Now Collaborate supports a number of files you can upload, but generally we're talking PowerPoint, 2000 and probably 7, maybe earlier, anything with a PPTX or a PPT extension, so probably PowerPoint 2000, 2003, 2007, 2010, all those different ones, they should be compatible. Um, you can also upload images as well, so if you saved your slides as images, like a bitmap or a, a JPEG file, you can also upload those into Collaborate. For our example, I'm going to choose the most common um, scenario, which is you've got a PowerPoint presentation. Click on the PowerPoint presentation, click Open. I may have to close PowerPoint for that to work, so just bear with me. Uh, yes. Let's try that again. I had to close PowerPoint because it uses some special features of PowerPoint to make this work. Let's try again. You can see here it's generating the PowerPoint slide images. Basically, it transforms each slide into an image, um, which means that any animations or special features you have in your slides won't work. It will only be basically an image of your slide that gets included, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so that process is now finished. I only had three slides in my presentation. You can see the first slide's loaded here, slide one. I then have slide two here. Double click on slide two. You can see slide two now becomes the focus. Now, other participants will be able to see all the slides you're presenting here because it's in the main whiteboard area. Again, click onto slide three, and you can also, you know, as you're presenting, after you've loaded your slides, you can then click the talk button, and now I'm presenting, and everyone can hear me, everyone can see the slides moving. And if I want to, I can go back to the public page. No one can see my slides. It's not ruining the presentation for everyone. No one's being distracted. Or if I need to, I can you know, click the text icon and say, you know, write some more key points. I forgot to demonstrate the text icon before, so there you see. You can um, do text as well.